everything set up one sec guys okay let's see how we're going i think we got audio there hi it's david shummy and welcome to this month's training now we've been pretty busy over the last uh, few weeks and so we've had so much going on i'm running this through a little webcam today because we just i just haven't had time to set everything up yet i wanted to show you uh this technique or at least part of the technique maybe whet your appetite into doing maybe a little bit of uh, frame restoration or at least some of the decorative techniques that we're going to have a look at today and what i've got with me I'll, I'll put the camera around down onto the table so that you can see but you guys might have seen these sort of cathedral type frames before this one here uh, did have a wedding photograph in it and what we've done is we've already gone through and just filled some of the uh, minor imperfections. There's a, you know, it's, a, it's an old frame. It was originally gold and then someone painted it a bright yellow. Um, we're not finishing it off with this gold finish, but I put a gold base on it because today we're going to have a little look at some wood graining and wood graining techniques. Because a lot of these old frames were painted to look like, say, burr walnut or some different, uh, like mahogany, different tones of wood. And the framers emulated those finishes on the frame. So today we're going to have a little look at how you emulate some of those finishes. We're going to do it a little bit with some uh, acrylic paints and some acrylic mediums. But traditionally that would have been done with oil paint. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera around down onto the, uh, onto the desk. I'm just working off the one camera today and I've got a little uh, Yeti microphone. You might see the Yeti actually in shot sometimes, but I'm not wearing my little normal lapel mic. So if we get um, a little bit choppy in the video, a little bit of issue with the audio, it's because we've just downgraded a little bit through this broadcast. But I wanted to push this out to you so that at least we get some content for you there. And you can always ask me questions in the chat. We're going to try and uh, we might be joint streaming this with uh, YouTube and Facebook. It depends on how my tech guys go behind the scenes. There. He's actually setting up the stream right now. So if you're if you joined in and you're with us live, please ask questions. I'll try to keep an eye on them in the computer and answer them. Other than that, I always try to answer them through the chats. If you leave the chat either in uh, YouTube, Facebook, or even within the webinar itself, they all come through and I'll get back to you if I don't get a chance to answer those questions during the actual broadcast. So anyway, I'm gonna turn it around. You can have a little look what I've got on the table here. Bear with me, I'll just turn the camera around. I'm running my little uh, webcam today. So hopefully that's gonna sort of give us the give us the table. Actually, that's not too bad, that's good. So I've got my, um, my little uh, cathedral frame here, which is the um, rounded top, sort of uh, rectangular with a rounded top. You guys might have seen ones like this. A lot of ovals we used to see like this. And this has the slumped glass. Now it hasn't, the, the, the picture that's in it is actually, I'll show you, it's one of these old ones. We've gone through and, um, and restored and restored the picture. I'll just grab the piece of uh, things to show you. So this is actually the photograph, the original photograph, but the uh, the lady in this image, she's, uh, I mean, she's since passed away, but her um, daughter, who now is actually in her 80s, said that her mum never liked the fact that they painted her legs blue. And I don't think that it was blue. I think they probably were... They painted uh, stockings, you know, in, the, in those days they did these hand colored photographs. And so I think they've tried to rub that off because there's a bit of damage on the photograph where they've been scrubbing away at this uh, photograph over the years. And when they brought it in to us, they brought it in for us to make a copy of this photograph. So we took it out and uh, Fabio, our photo restorer, did a, a great copy and actually restored the legs to what the uh, daughter recalled mum said she was wearing on the day now in this frame this is a piece of acrylic it had this piece of acrylic in there someone had obviously broken the slumped glass so had the piece of acrylic sitting straight on top of this already domed 
uh, photograph, you can see the, the bubble in it. And this is just sort of squashed together. So what we've done is we, we did the repair. And when they were picking up the actual repaired uh, photograph, I mentioned to them that it might be a good idea to, um, to actually repair the frame the frame was a good frame except it was just a bright yellow and they had this original photograph which was in pretty good condition and we know of a company called tudor glass if you're in australia and you actually need to get slumped glass if you search tudorglass.com.au they still make slumped glass for picture frames so these guys are in south australia you send off a paper template in the post to them that's the most successful way and then Les down there makes the slumped glass and he sends it back to us, it's in the rack. I'm, I'm not gonna get it out right now because we're not dealing with actual fitting of the photograph or fitting the glass today. But a little tip for you guys, if you need to get hold of the, of the slumped glass in Australia, that is Tudor glass uh, does still make it and will send it out to you. So we got a new piece of slumped glass, but this frame was this sort of yellow color. In fact, it might even be, you can probably see around the edges here, this yellow. Now it's sort of like almost drippy yellow enamel. Um, and it definitely wasn't that color originally. It would have been a gold and it would have had a wood grain. So I suggested to them, in fact, there's a maker's mark on there, one of the empire frames. So I suggested to them, why don't we try to put back the uh, uh, kind of authentic finish on it, an original type finish. And so they agreed to that and we're going to do that now. I'll show you on this frame, but I'm also gonna, I've bought a couple of pieces of matboard out, just like silver bit of matboard. I bought a gold bit of matboard out because I hope I can show you a few of the techniques that are used to impart those finishes. A um, Couple of other things I got on the table here, a little pile of white powder. This is actually chalk. Uh, the sort of stuff that, um, you know, ground up chalk we use in our uh, composition molding. But chalk is really useful when it comes to doing some painted finishes. And I'll explain what that's about in a minute. So we've got chalk there. We've got a few different um, paint colors. I haven't, got, I haven't got a whole lot of paints here. We're just use, going to use acrylics. I'm not going to use oils today just for uh, speed. We're going to work with some of these uh, Joe Sonia acrylics, but any acrylic, Generally, you want some of the transparent colors, but these are some earth colors. The only transparent one we got there is raw sienna and the ultramarine uh, blue, but burnt sienna is quite a good transparent uh, oxide for making some of these tones. But I, I just grabbed these out. I had them handy. I got a little bit of raw umber there, just a, a cheap acrylic. So first up, let's just put a bit of color. Oh. This, by the way, is mutton cloth. You might have seen this before. It's like a, a, a sausage. You used to put meat into it. They'd tie it up and they'd put uh, meat to hang it up. Salamis, various sorts of hams and things. But or, or that's where the mutton cloth name comes from, from sort of wrap, wrapping up mutton. But what this is also known as is painter's cloth. And it's really useful because of the grain that the fabric has. So it's great for making texture in paint. And the other thing about it, it doesn't leave a fluff behind when you're working with it. So it's a really handy cloth to use. One thing, if you're gonna use this, I'll just point out, you normally tear it. And the way to tear it is you take a small thread. So like a lady's stocking, you take this thread and you pull the thread as much as you can. So see how I've pulled out this one continuous thread all the way through if I can. And then what you've done is just like a, a pair of stockings, you've created a ladder in that mutton cloth and you're able to take this apart along that join. So the reason for doing that is that will, when you rip it this way, you end up having a cloth that doesn't have uh, lint. And so we like to use mutton cloth, particularly when toning molding, like if you're ever painting molding and you, you need to run color on the molding, mutton cloth is always good because it's absorbent. Uh, it's a, I think it's a natural cotton actually. And what happens is that absorbs the paint very well. And because it doesn't have sort of fluff 
on it, it doesn't leave anything in your paint. So you can sort of roll it up. Those torn edges don't tend to, sh to shed stuff. And so you can actually roll it up. It makes quite a nice pad. Not many people might know that, but painter's cloth, mutton cloth, very, very useful in picture framing if you're uh, toning or painting things. So we're going to use some of that today. The other thing um, I did, I've got to mix up some paint. So I'm not too worried about the color here. I've just, this is just a, a cheap hog's hair brush. I've got another one, a flat one that I'm going to use to actually paint onto the frame and do a little bit of texturing there. I don't even know what color we're going to end up with. I don't know how these paints are going. We're going to get a bit in there. We're going to mix it up. I already have just a little bit of um, like a gel type medium into the paint here. Um, and the reason for that is I wanted to keep it reasonably thick. I didn't want to have it very, very runny. Um, we do need some degree of runniness to it. And we do need some degree of transparency to it. So one of the other things that I'm using just with this one, this is Atelier uh, Unlocking Formula. And what that is, that's just, it's basically a an extender that opens the drying time on acrylic paints. Now, you want to be careful with it because if you put too much of stuff like this in, the paint doesn't dry. And the reason we want to make the paint dry slower is so that it can emulate some of the oil paint type characteristics because the what we're doing with the finish here is we need enough time to be able to manipulate the finish itself to actually put it onto the frame and wipe off what we don't want and it gives us enough time to work with the pattern whereas if you just use straight acrylic certainly in australia the temperature is too hot we're too dry and hot at the moment anyway that uh, the paint dries before you get a chance to actually work with it. So if you put some of the um, the medium into into your paint, what that's going to do, it's just going to open up. Doesn't need a lot. It's going to open up the actual uh, the paint itself. It's going to extend that drying time. In oil paint, we used to use kerosene was one of the things that we could do to extend it in oil, but oil was quite open anyway it had long drying time but if you're doing a large amount of um, wood graining or painting and you wanted extended uh, drying time in oil you could use paraffin or kerosene um, into um, into acrylic they are you can use glycerine but glycerine you need to be a little bit experimental with how much glycerine you use because glycerine can slow the paint right down and again, it makes it difficult to have, uh, difficult for it to dry. I just put a little bit of water in. Actually, it might be a bit much, but we'll see how we go. And I want to get a little bit of, um, I don't want this so yellow. I just want to get some red into it. And I want to get some of the, um, the blues into it to get it a little bit dirtier. So blue and orange, complementary colors. I, hopefully I'm coming up with a color that I want. Might, might not be right, we'll, we'll see how we go. Oh gosh, give that one a shake. Probably all comes spearing out. I didn't, I didn't test this tube before I came out the front. I just grabbed a handful from our little selection that we used to touch up frames. So not a lot of blue. Again, this color may not be super successful. We'll just see how we go. What I want is a uh, brown, or ready brown. Gonna be a little bit runny actually with this water. We might need to get another little tray. Won't matter. This is what, um, oh, we can probably, actually we might even be able to work with that. I want something a little bit darker than that too. Should have got a bigger, bigger um, palette. I just grab one of our normally when we're doing um, when we're doing our little frame retouching and stuff. We just use these little ceramic ones. Might be a little bit too um, too orange. I do want it orange because the 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 original frame would have had that sort of are probably on the orangey end of the browns have too much here. Give me one sec, I'm just going to grab a little saucer, won't be a tick.
Yeah, normally when we do this sort of stuff, I do it right next to the sink. So I just want a bit of that one. We might modify the color a little bit. Keep that one out of the way for a sec. Always great when you're um, when you're doing something and having to record it and get it right. We're doing this all in one take. There won't be um, there won't be edits. There might be when we get it back up into our uh, into our uh, members area, but right now while you guys are watching it's all as it happens so bear with me if we make a few mistakes so this is looking quite good this is actually kind of this brown ready brown might might be too light still but we'll just we'll see how we go in fact i might keep that for actually when we work on the frame and i might show you a couple of little things on the uh on the uh mat board just quickly with some of the paint that we've already got so a couple of things with uh, the wood graining a lot of the time it would just be done with a brush so you they might have just decided to go along the frame and actually paint little s straight swells like so or stipple every now and then or a wiggle like so and so if you if you went and you wiggled across the frame like that and you made a series of patterns what you would tend to do is after you've made that pattern you would take off the area where you don't want it so i'm just going to use the yellow cloth we use a mutton cloth when we get on the frame but if i wipe that section and i'll wipe the other section So this is just on map board, but you'll get the effect. What I what I would have done, let's see if I can get it in there in the in the camera, is we would create a cross grain in between the two white sections. So you could use that to actually create wood grain that had a sort of straight grain to it. Now, by manipulating the brush, you can change the pattern that that makes. Now there are a number of other things that we've got that manipulate paint to actually make wood grain patterns. And I'll see if I can sort of, silver seems to be flaring up a little bit on the camera. I wonder how the gold is. I just want to hold it up. Oh, that's a little bit more matte. We might, we might actually work on gold for a bit and just see if it works. I just was wanting to see how the, um, how the color worked as a background for you guys. So I dug out my old, um, my old painting box i'll show you what what's in here because it's a little bit of a my my working my working box of tricks and in here well, there's a, actually a couple of molds and things different molds but primarily this is my box of brushes so we got things like badger brushes that are used for watercolor wood graining we've got hog's hair brushes which are used for um wood graining with oil primarily these are actually softeners they're a flat cut brush on the top used to vibrate slowly over paint surfaces to give them marbled effects we've got a various wood graining brush here that has a hog bristle and a nylon bristle and these can be manipulated with your fingers in the bristles to actually create various grains we've got oh, another little badger brush poor little badger that donated his fur to these i keep them you can't really get them much anymore a flogger this is a large brush that's actually used to hit the paint once it's on a on a uh, brush these are english brushes by the way um used to use a lot in oak wood graining then we got various things like there's a gilders tool in there we got a tickler we're going to have a little look at the tickler this is actually used for applying um basically the oak pattern but it's a series of metal metal uh rails and it's got a funny little pattern on it i don't know whether you can see the notches it's a little bit like a broken rec little broken records and each of these little records makes a certain pattern but i'll show you how that works and then there's various oh this is a straight grain 
tool. It has, again, you can see there's five or six, how many, seven uh, brushes in there. This is used for straight graining. So we'd use that actually on a, on a frame and we can manipulate how the hair is to paint wide grain. So these are also used in oak type wood grain. So there's a few different ones. Oh, stippling brush. You might have seen one of those before. That's used for stenciling. But it's also useful for putting like uh, light texture on top to give you that little uh, kind of not fly spec look, but add another level of texture to things. So there are things like um, stipplers that are also quite useful. Um, we've got some other bits in there. Then we've got these interesting tools. These are actually wood graining. And I'm going to, oh, a couple of other things. Quickly show you. These are combs. You can make your own, make your own from plastic containers, but a comb is used quite extensively in wood graining, not so much on the picture frame itself, but used, you know, we've got different degrees of comb, and these can be put often inside your mutton cloth to drag along to create different grain effects. So various, they're not used often as they are just rough, they're used inside a cloth. But these are useful for certain types of graining. So you can make your own up from uh, plastic containers, ice cream container lids, uh, your margarine lids, that sort of thing. Very useful if you need to make uh, combs. Otherwise, we just have a little set that we use every now and then for various uh, unusual type grain things. So I'll show you a couple of the, the um, various ticklers and things because these are a little bit fun. You can find these. These are just uh, graining tools in the sense that they're like a comb device. So if we take one of these um, one of these combs, actually we'll take one of the one of the fine ones for example, we'll just see how it goes on the gold. We would put some colour on. So I'm just going to paint a strip of colour. Bear with me if it doesn't work. I haven't tried it on matte board before, but we're going to give it a go. So if I was going to paint a length that I wanted to have a particular grain in, I could impart a grain with my brush itself. But ways of creating grain is using some of the rollers so we can comb that. And by rotating and combing our, our graining roller, we are able to impart a wood grain pattern so you can see how that one's created that sort of pattern there some of the wider ones would make a wider grain pattern so we'll do another one just alongside it so you can have a look at how that is so this one this time i'll go with one of the the wider open grains we'll see it'll make a bigger ver bigger version And so we can simulate wood by what we do with some of our uh, various combs. Now there are ones that are just straight, you know, this sort of little comb here where it's got the little teeth on it and it's got the, um, the little circle cuts to make the, the open grain. This is actually quite useful just as a comb. So if we wanted to do it as a combed effect, you can just comb the actual pattern itself. So we don't necessarily, we can just comb a straight pattern, but you can just actually wiggle. So you can get some quite interesting effects with just the comb finish. Don't know whether you can see the, the combing there on the camera, we'll see if we can get it up. So that's just a comb and ripple, which is quite good. Um, other things are the tickle rollers, which are these sort of things, but these generally are put on on top. So if we were going to use something like that, we might use a darker color and often I'll put a bit on the, on the, take some off the mat itself and see if we can do it for you. We would coat the tickle roller with paint first. And then what that does is when that goes on, 
it actually leaves now you may or may not see this I'll try and show it up close put on a bit of a map board there so this roller puts this pattern here now this is a random dot and dash pattern it's very very good with oak so if you've done a sort of oak grain and then you go over with the little tickler it puts that fleck on top of the initial grain that you've put on underneath so you got a number of different tools for creating wild and wacky grains you can do these um, onto picture frames like flat panels quite easily if you're going to do it on a on a oval picture frame like this we wouldn't generally use some of the rubber rollers although we could use one of the the combs if we wanted to but with this one we're probably just going to do a really simple straight grain across the across the piece so you can find some of these things in various paint shops um some of the i'm not i'm not up to speed with some of the places in the uk anymore but we used to um we used to get some of this stuff um gosh i think it was plotons that had uh a lot of the graining tools and, and some of the brushes but you, you don't really see them too much in australia because we don't have access to some of those tools over here but certainly in america and in uh in the europe you should be able to still get a lot of the fun things and now with the internet you might even be able to order these things online quite easily but they they're not they're a specialist sort of tool so only really if you're getting into some of the graining effects would you would you use them anyway what we're going to do we're just going to hop on to the um to the oval that we got hopefully i can do it it's it's um the, the paint that i've got here may or may not be dark enough but oh, it might be I, ju I just want a little bit um a little bit deeper color in it that's all and uh i don't want to run around and get more color just put a little bit more blue in it i just want to dirty it up uh, a touch which i want to brown but this is just a maybe a little bit light but we'll see how we go we can always take it back um, if we need to so one thing about painting a frame and that's why i brought my little pile of white powder my little bit of chalk is it really works well if you take um take a cloth and get it wet like so i'm going to put that into some water i don't want it dripping wet but i've i've got a damp a damp cloth here now and then what i'm going to do is i'll put that damp cloth into my into my chalk so i've got a little bit of chalk on the cloth now in the old days i used to do watercolor wood graining on top of oil paint and one of the old guys that taught me he always swore by the fact that you could paint watercolor on top of oil and this is something that's kind of alien and you shouldn't be able to do but the reason or how he did it was he cleaned that surface like he would shellac the surface have an oil paint and shellac and then what he would do is he would use chalk and he'd actually go with the damp cloth from the chalk and he'd wipe where he was going to paint and the reason he said that was what happens was the chalk itself actually took off all the fingerprints so it was a little bit abrasive but what happened is it there was no grease so once you'd actually removed the grease on where you wanted to paint then you could put the watercolor paint onto it so i just wipe it down and i'm just going to dive straight in actually with this um brown and i'm just going to paint a straight grain on it i really don't want to mess around i'm i'm not i'm not i may put a bit of a squiggle in there but I just want something that's pretty straight, pretty easy. I'm just going to go across it. I want to get paint on there. We're going to manipulate it once we get it on. Because we're only going to get a limited amount of time, even though we've put, um, 
even though we've put uh, extender in there to keep this open we don't want to let the paint go off before we can actually add the grain and wipe it off because otherwise it's going to defeat the purpose so I've just got the color on here and then what I really want to do is get into a bit more of a dry brush and I'm going to go just across on an angle and I'm putting a bit of a swirl So yeah, I want to rem I'm removing paint with the brush. So I've kind of worked around on that angle. And what I want to do is use my mutton cloth as well. Because I want to see if I can take some of that colour out. So I'm just taking off poop bits. Often it helps to have a, a turntable or walk around when you're working on something like this. So when I'm sort of happy that I've got a, a grain like effect, what I want to do is I need to now clean this up because we need to put other tones on there. So I'm going to take this back edge and I'm using my mutton cloth with my finger and I'm just wiping. So again, want to be a little bit quick because once we've started to thin it down, and we've got the uh, the paint starts to go off and set into that pattern. We want to be able to wipe this gold lip. So I want to get that outside lip done. And then I want to get in on the inside here. So finger into the mutton cloth into the inside and I'm wiping quite hard and reasonably fast I want to get all the way around now just on that lip I got one little bit just started to go off on me I'm trying to take the paint, oh, trying to take the paint off the gold on the front lip, but I want to leave my wood grain. We're going to add another tone to this in that front lip, just to break up that line. But really, the whole point of getting around, let's make sure any other little bits where I've left it. One advantage of oil is you have so much more time to work your finish, whereas with this, we have little time. Um, I mean, there's more time than if you just use neat acrylic, if you put the extender in. But what I've done, and it's only partially done, because I will add more to it, is on this section, we've gone around and we've added our wood grain all the way through that section of that frame and we've left the inside lip still gold so this was just like a traditional bronze uh, like a bronzy color it wasn't um wasn't gold leaf but um in the uh take a bit more off that lip i can see where there's a line that could be cleaner I go and clean up the lines. Got to, got to work reasonably quickly. But 
Yeah, I did. Mostly they used uh, bronze powder on these, or or like a and a uh, like a macaceous powder, and mixed in with animal glue. Sometimes then after that they use some metallic paints, and then the graining would have been done in oil on top of the metallic paint. Or sometimes they would have just had only gold on the outside edge. But a lot of the time, if you look closely, the gold was under the wood or under the wood grain. And that actually gave you that luminescence within the, uh, within the oval frame. So what's going to happen, we're going to have to leave this to dry. And once it's dried, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a little bit more detail to that grain. And some of that's going to be some darker color to add a little bit of definition into this swell that we've got. So it may take, uh, you know, sometimes you do that in one go if you do a dark sort of burly type thing. But in this case, I want to add a little bit more other patterning to it so that it really gives it that depth uh, and wood grain color. So I won't, we can't do that now because of the fact that it's got to dry but uh, i hope that from what we've done today that you've at least had a chance to have a bit of a look to see if we get that camera up there to have a bit of a look at how you could have a go at taking on some of of this type of work because you can just retouch pieces like if you're careful certainly uh, if you're, if someone's wanting original type condition or there is value in that frame, you may want to use traditional methods on there. Here, we're doing, the, the frame's already been butchered by a few people. It's been, it had been painted yellow first and we're not, I didn't strip off that enamel. I could have probably stripped it off and found the original finish underneath. Sometimes that you can use uh, 3M safest stripper. You can actually strip layer by layer. So we probably could have stripped it and seen what the finish was. But I just know from some of my experience that a lot of those have that sort of walnut or mahogany type grain on them. And that was an easy fix for us to offer it as a add on to these people who have already paid quite a lot for a restoration of the photograph because they want that um, those photographs for various relatives. And now they're going to be able to at least have the original frame back sort of like it was that the lady who's now in her 80s remembers when she was a young girl. So that's probably part of the thrill that she's going to be able to get the enjoyment out of it. So look, if you've got any questions, please ask them in the chat. Uh, We've got a lot more planned for you guys coming up, more exciting sort of framing and things like that. We're going to do a little bit of um, hot seats at some point. If any of you guys want to participate in that, where you can come on and we could actually uh, have roundtable discussions amongst framers. We want to do that. We, we've got the technology sort of nearly there, ready to go. So as our uh, internet speeds get better and as we get into, we've got some new camera switching stuff coming, some new uh, cameras coming. As that happens, the quality will lift again. And so please stick with us in the Framers Club and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for coming today.